Ah, creation myths. A staple in mythology all over the world, from the Norse and Greeks to Japan and Mexico. But why are they so prominent? Mythology stories are all about teaching the values of whoever told them. Just take the Norse concept of duality and cyclicism, which is a Japanese concept of doing things the proper way. All of which I intend to go into more in detail about later. However, today we'll be focusing on maybe the most important and well-known Mayan myth. That's right, today we're going to talk about the Popovu. I really hope I'm saying that right. Now we tend to generalize the Maya as being one collective civilization that mysteriously disappeared thousands of years ago. However, there were tons of different kingdoms, with many of them speaking their own language, and rose to power and fell at different points in time. Heck, there are still tons of Mayan languages still spoken to this day. So when we're talking about the Popovu, we're referring to the book written in the 1500s in Quiche, a language spoken in modern day Guatemala, by none other than the Quiche themselves. I like to emphasize just how diverse in culture and people these civilizations were, and how they weren't just the same group of pre-Hispanic Mexicans who built pyramids and ripped people's hearts out of their chests for their gods for some reason. However, that doesn't mean that the stories of the Popovu didn't influence or have been influenced by other Maya or Mesoamerican peoples, or that the Quiche were a small group of people, as they had millions of people who spoke the language and still speak it to this day. It's no wonder that the book was so important to the Maya and Mesoamerican culture as a whole. In fact, it was so important that the text and corresponding drawings were kept hidden in Santo Tomas Church in modern day Chichen Castanenco, as in most other Mayan books have been so generously discarded by the Spanish during the conquest. However, 200 years later, the Spanish priest Francisco Jimenez gained the trust of the Quiche and was allowed to see a copy of the Popovu. He then copied it word for word and translated it, with the original copy unfortunately being lost to time, and with the Spanish version now in the museum in none other than Chicago. Hey, at least it's the same hemisphere. <coughs> Turquoise serpent. <coughs> now, despite the Quiche version of the book being written in the 1500s, the story itself is much, much older than that, dating back thousands of years as seen with Stila just says he's up a Stila 25 in Mexico, in a temple in Belize, both dating back to the BC times, and was most likely passed down through oral traditions. Children and adults alike gathered around a fire to hear the tale of the creation of the world, or the fourth one to be exact. You see, unlike the Aztecs who believed that they lived in the fifth world, the Mayan believed they were in the fourth. Well, kind of, not really the fourth world, more like just a fourth creation, uh, uh, you'll see. Before that, however, was a good friend nothingness, no plants or animals, or even mountains, just an endless sky with the just as endless primordial sea below it, as most creation myths tend to have. It wasn't until a handful of gods spontaneously appeared, including Hudakan, the heart of the sky, and a feathered serpent, Kukukan, with Hudakan being called the one-legged one, similar to Tezcatlipoca who lost his leg while creating the world, alongside straight up the same exact feathered serpent in the Popovu. So it's clear to see the major influences both cultures had on each other, despite being more different than most people think. But unlike the Aztec creation myth, the Mayan didn't believe that the world was created by the corpse of a giant alligator. Man, mythology is weird. Fun fact, the god Hurukan is actually where we get the word hurricane from, and you'll see why soon. The Popovu states that the first world was actually created by the thoughts and most importantly, the words spoken by the god. As they spoke, the land rose from the water, rivers carved their way through the land, and plants sprouted all over, along with the mountains. Four sable trees grew, one in each corner of the earth, to keep the heavens held up, with a larger tree in the center as a bridge between the heavens, earth, and the underworlds. But there was a problem, the gods needed someone to praise them for their work, so they created the animals to live in a new world. However, there was another problem, the animals couldn't talk, at least not like the gods could. Instead, all they could do was bark, chatter, and growl, so the gods tried again. Sheesh. Imagine being one of the first living beings in the world only to be told you weren't good enough by the ones who created you. It seems pretty harsh to me, especially when the gods are the ones who made them like that. However, it goes to show that the Mayan and other civilizations didn't think the gods were perfect and made mistakes just like us. Which is an interesting thought. Their second attempt involved making people out of mud. However, they weren't the most stable beings in the world. Since, well, they're made out of mud so they couldn't reproduce, they couldn't move around very well, and so the gods washed them away in a flood, like all good creation myths, and went back to the drawing board. This time, they made people out of wood. They were sturdier than mud, but they didn't have any hearts, or at least not any good ones, as these guys were just a bunch of jerks. They refused to acknowledge the gods, disrespected their grinding pots, and even worse, abused the animals, including their own dogs. Despite the gods thinking of animals as imperfect and lesser than speaking people, they at least knew not to hurt and disrespect them like that, so the gods sent the dogs and other animals to attack and eat them. The pots and rocks tried their very best to help too, 
and they try to climb the trees and go into the caves, but the trees refuse to let them climb up them, and the caves close. Pudukan then sent down the flood to finish them off, with a few survivors hiding and eventually evolving into monkeys. Serves him right. So what now? Said the gods, unsure of what to do next. When one of them comes up with an idea, seeing animals carry maize around, otherwise known as corn, saying, yes, let's use this corn stuff to make the new people, because that's how mythology works, guys. So they grounded up the corn and mixed it up with water, making masa, a type of dough, and formed them into the new humans. Hey, that's us! They made four men and four women, and asked them what they could see. The men and women replying, hey, we can see everything, the mountains, the valleys, and the oceans, and the edges of the earth. The gods looked at each other and were like, uh, guys, I think we kind of made these people a little bit too well. If they can see and understand everything that we can, then how they respect us and how they worship us. So in a total jerk move, the gods blur their vision, clouding their understanding of the world and the universe, making them quote unquote lesser than the gods, but not so lesser so that they couldn't worship them anymore. It said that the couples created by the gods were actually the first in line of several Mayan royal families. This was probably used by the Mayan kings to justify their rule and to show how magical and godly their origins are. Another staple in mythology, just look at the Japanese sun kami Amaterasu who is said to be the ancestor to literally all Japanese emperors in Japan. A topic for another time. Keep in mind that this is just one small part of the Popoku and we can already begin to see the values of the Mayan culture just through the story alone. We can infer that oral traditions were very important to them as the world was created by the words of the gods and the gods tried time and time again to create beings that could speak. Heck, it might be more important now than ever, as indigenous people like the Kicha are being forced to integrate with their country's more European culture, especially being made to give up their native language, for one like Spanish. Respect was also a big deal, as disrespecting not only living beings, but household objects as well around you, was punishable by death in the eyes of the gods. But most importantly, you can't forget corn. I mean, come on guys, it's tasty, it can be made into loads of other things like tortillas and tamales, and in our modern society, it literally runs the world, from feeding our cattle to powering our batteries. I mean, with corn being so vital to life next only to water, it only makes sense for us to be made out of corn and water. So now, where was I? Oh yeah, that was only the first part of the Popo Vu, with even more explanations of how my society came to be to come. I mean, ever wonder where the sun and the moon came from? Well, as much as it pains me to say this, I can't fit it on to one video and do the Popo Vu release a little justice, so make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for when I talk about the Hero Twins. In the meantime, use your voice, respect, and be thankful for the creatures and objects around you, and remember why corn is so important. Just think about it.